Name something you see in every scary movie. Tell me. はい。あの、ちょっとあの、日本人として避けたい。避けてほしいことです。えっと、やっぱり困ってる子供たちを食べるんですよね。子供、子供、困ってる子供たち、貧しい子供たちが食べるんですよ。何をですか？この真っ赤なところで取れた魚、サンマ、ね、サバ、一番真っ赤なところにいるやつ
Over 15,000 people lost their lives. This number could have been far higher had the disaster occurred in another country. Japan leads the world in earthquake preparation. Japanese engineers have spent decades perfecting techniques like shock absorbers and reinforced walls to minimize the damage of natural disasters. Japan's power plants have similar safeguards. The quake triggered automatic shutdowns for 11 of the country's nuclear reactors, including the Fukushima Daiichi power plant run by TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company. At first, it seemed there might be a stroke of good luck. Of the six reactors at the plant, three were already shut down for maintenance. Yet the quake cut the power station from the national grid, and the tsunami damaged the emergency generators. As the Japanese government scrambled to protect the people of Fukushima, TEPCO officials stated that no meltdown had occurred, and they were working around the clock to minimize the damage. Not everyone believed them, and those skeptics turned out to be correct. Here's where it gets crazy. Nuclear power plant mishaps are usually rated on a scale of 1 to 7, with 1 being the least severe and 7 being something on the level of Chernobyl. Initially, the Fukushima disaster was rated a 4, and TEPCO officials claimed there was no meltdown. Yet according to reporters from The Independent, the meltdown was already occurring as TEPCO released this statement. The earthquake knocked out the plant's power and the tsunami washed out the backup generators soon after. Without a continual source of cooling, the waters surrounding the nuclear fuel rods began to boil away. The metal tubes holding uranium fuel pellets overheated and cracked. When the water reached the fuel pellets, it triggered a process called thermolysis. The water grew so hot that it broke down into hydrogen and oxygen. This volatile hydrogen gas needed to be vented, but venting too quickly caused an explosion on March 12th. By the 15th of March, two more explosions had occurred. If the water continued to boil away, then a meltdown was surely imminent. By April 11th, nuclear regulators raised the severity level to a 7, ranking it on par with Chernobyl. Today, there is no doubt that this disaster will affect Japan for decades to come. Yet, numerous individuals, including some former and current TEPCO employees, believe the reactor wasn't safe to begin with. Nine days before the meltdown, Japan's Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency warned TEPCO of failures to perform critical inspections. Earlier in 2002, TEPCO admitted to covering up data about cracks in circulation pipes, which siphon heat from the reactors. In the months following the disaster, TEPCO admitted that a massive fuel melt occurred 16 hours after the loss of coolant, still several hours before the initial hydrogen explosion. In crisis scenarios, incorrect information can often get spread accidentally. However, in this case, it appears disinformation may have been spread intentionally, or at least the truth was downplayed. As of 2011, numerous questions remain about the events leading up to the meltdown and the extent of the remaining damage and contamination. Will the public learn the answers to these questions? What is the extent of the damage to Fukushima? What does this disaster mean for similar nuclear power plants around the globe? For now, it appears these answers are something they don't want you to know. Yeah.